Hi, I'm Sally Glass and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Meadows Museum and speak with Meadows Director Dr. Mark Roglan about their exhibition, Soroya and America. Now for Art This Week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. So to start off, can you sort of explain to us how this exhibition evolved and what the organization was in curation? Yes, uh, this exhibition started over a little over three years ago uh, when we decided that uh, we wanted to do a Soroya exhibition and, and do an exhibition focused on America because uh, America was critical in the evolution of this artist's um, career and a show of uh, specialized in this, in this moment of time in his career had never been done. So we contacted Blanca Pon Sorolla, which is the uh, most important authority of Sorolla in the world, and also the great granddaughter of the artist, and, and we asked her if she would be uh, willing to be the curator of the exhibition, which she agreed to, and, uh, and since then she, we've been working uh, very closely uh, organizing the exhibition itself. Um, and at the end, the result is uh, the show we now are unveiling. Can you talk a little bit more about some of his artist friends in America, who they were and what sort of influences they had on his career? Yes, indeed. Uh, he, uh, especially, of course, the, the other great artists of his time that was American was John Singer Sargent. And Sargent and him uh, really were good friends and, and they, I think they admire each other's works. Sometimes uh, Sorolla would talk, uh, tell his wife that he went to London to see him in his studio and when seeing the paintings, he could see that Sargent was Sorolleando, so th <laughs> that he was uh, doing a, And I'm sure Sargent could say the same thing of Sorolla as well. But there was this kind of a very, uh, uh, very approachable uh, uh, and, uh, understanding between both artists. Another important American artist that was really a close friend of Sorolla was William Mary Chase. And William Mary Chase, he loved Spanish art. Both, all three of them, uh, and Sorolla talks about it and when he exhibited in 1911, he talks about Chase, Sargent himself, just being children of Velázquez. So they all admire this old master, know, that it's so well represented at the Prado Museum. And basically, uh, they follow that, that tradition. So he gravitated a lot uh, to this artist. And there's two little sketches in the exhibition that are uh, gifts of Sorolla to both Sargent and to uh, William Mary Chase that just uh, testifies how, how, how great relationship they had. And Chase would send all his students to, uh, to Spain, to Madrid, to try to work with Sorolla. And, and, and Sorolla would accept many of his students uh, to be trained by him in, in Madrid. And, and there's a lot of correspondence. Also, there's a very interesting painting we recently found, and for, uh, in some way, one could say, is this portrait of a gentleman called Clarkson, that is uh, an artist that was working in Chicago in 1911 and, and, and really got along very well with uh, Sorolla. And he did, Sorolla did this beautiful portrait of him that's for the first time being exhibited in this exhibition uh, and out of its home in, in, northern, in the northern part of the United States. And basically, uh, it's really interesting that we have found a copy of Las Meninas in the back of this, uh, in the back of this painting, because he did the portrait of the Clarkson, but then in the background he did Las Meninas, which at the end just uh, help us uh, understand how these artists were going back, you know, to Velázquez, you know, and, and how it can be in Chicago in 1911, and this, probably Clarkson also loved Velázquez, and with just a few touches, Sorolla has copied so many times Velázquez that he's able to render that incredible painting in the back. It's, it, it goes on and on and on, uh, the, the relationship between American artists and Sorolla. There's incredible amounts of documentation uh, of, of, of his influence in all these artists uh, during his lifetime. Yeah. And we're standing now in front of one of Sorolla's portraits of his wife. Um, can you discuss a little bit of the history of this particular work as well as the process that, that brought it here to the museum today? Yes, it's a painting that's in the Hispanic Society of America, which is Sorolla's home in the United States. And it's a painting that uh, was done in 1903. And uh, it, it, it's an early portrait of his wife, Clotilde. Uh, Sorolla was very close to his wife and, and it said that when they were not together and he was traveling there wasn't a day that he would not send her a letter and with the letter a bouquet of flowers. So uh, really uh, uh, very very close to his wife and he she's one of her his best model. She, she is portrayed, the person he portrays the most throughout his career. 
And this is a beautiful picture uh, that reminds us uh, the influence of another uh, great old master from the Spanish school. His name is Goya. This kind of pose uh, showing even the shoe coming out of. This is uh, this profile that she's looking uh, to us. And this uh, very uh, uh, astute kind of uh, way and how the light is rendered, you know, from this beautiful hand to uh, how all this white, uh, which one cannot call white. I mean, there's so many different whites in just this uh, uh, dress that uh, it's so loosely painted that it's wonderful. Unfortunately, uh, when the painting, uh, we were looking into bringing it to the exhibition, and it was, uh, had been darkened because of a previous restoration. So we were very lucky to count with um, Lucia, uh, the conservator from uh, 19th century paintings, one of the conservators of the Prado in the 19th century the painting department in Madrid, and she decided to tackle this picture, and, and she was able to clean it and beautifully bring out uh, from the darkness, we could say, uh, the image of, um, of, of his wife and come out with this incredible uh, picture, which still is at the Spanish Society in New York today. We're now standing in front of one of his beach scenes for which Sorolla became very well known. Um, can you discuss with us for a moment some of his technique as well as his use of color and light? Yes, uh, Sorolla really loved to do plein air paintings. So this painting was undoubtedly painting on the beach. And he liked to paint very fast. Uh, maybe this painting was done in one day or less. And he has this kind of very fast uh, kind of technique with long brush strokes sometimes, but also like other short brush strokes and, and other instances. It's all about capturing light. It's all capturing movement. Um, and in fact, he did studies with, uh, about this painting and shows us the different ways he was trying to make the figure move in the painting itself. Also, he has to work fast because uh, the water is about to disappear you know, from the beach. And so he has just basically a few seconds before the water uh, is going to absorb that reflection. So he likes to work a lot uh, in a very, this kind of loose way and getting all the foam from the waves and, and all the different lights in the Mediterranean. And basically, uh, he's working also, as I mentioned, on plein air, even with a painting on an easel or just put against a wall or any kind of surface he could find that we can, if we look very closely, like here or here or here, we can even see like little grains of sand that have come up because a breeze probably brought them and, and, and stuck them in on the canvases. So he just leaves them there and works with them. Um, and the result is this kind of incredible vaporous and, 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 and painterly uh, pictures in which the beauty of, of life and, and of, 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 of the Mediterranean is uh, exploded in, in a way that only Sorolla was able to do. Uh, this is some of uh, his more famous and some of the works he was better known as for this kind of joie de vivre, uh, kind of happy moments in the shores of Valencia with kids and, and fishermen working in his beloved uh, city town. Why do you think people will be most surprised to learn about Soroya in this exhibition and what is the hope that it might do for the scholarship on the artist? I think this exhibition uh, will bring to a new generation, perhaps Soroya for the first time. The last time there was a large exhibition on Soroya in America was in 1989. So it's been over almost 25 years since we haven't seen an exhibition uh, of, 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 of this size. Uh, this is the largest exhibition on a number of uh, works by Soroya ever mounted since he died. So we hope that people that do not know about Soroya will encounter and, 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 and fall in love the same way that their great-great-grandparents did a uh, hundred years ago uh, again. And people that do know Soroya will have an opportunity that's just historical. I mean, it's just once in a lifetime that you'll be able to see so many works of, of, of Soroya, not only paintings, um, but also gouaches, drawings, oil sketches. Uh, see Soroya uh, is complete because we have history painting, genre paintings, we have uh, portraits, we have beach scenes, we have uh, street life scenes, we have uh, flamenco scenes. I mean, it's, there's not a subject that Soroya didn't work that cannot be represented, not a technique that is not represented in the exhibition. And, and with 160 works, it's just extraordinary. And even like furthermore, with 100 works of art never shown or seen in over 100 years, and 60 of them shown for the first time, it's just going to be a way to discover this artist uh, and his incredible connection because all the works 
uh, are connected to America, uh, that is, uh, I think, is a lifetime experience. Well, the exhibition looks fantastic. Thanks Thank so you. much for joining us. Thank you for coming. We want to thank Dr. Roglan for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to meadowsmuseumdallas.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your poem.